Sinead's put in this position where, you know, they give her the option to abort a child or get the treatment and get better kind of yeah. thing. So she's in this position where it's just heart-wrenching where she's got to choose between her unborn child and herself. Um, and I think she feels really guilty because of a past storyline where she had an abortion. So I think that's always playing in the back of her mind when she's put forward to this huge decision that she's got to make. I mean, throughout doing the part and the storyline, I've had to just try and put myself in her shoes. But I still, to this day, I don't know what I'd do. Like, yeah, it's just such a difficult position. I, I don't know. Yeah. I really don't know myself. We had a, a lady on earlier on in the week, uh, Veronica Mehta, uh, who's a musician uh, in Bollywood and in real life. Um, uh, she discovered she had breast cancer while she was pregnant. Mm. So this is obviously something that, that mm. does occur, hopefully not, yeah. not too often, but, yeah. uh, it, but, but it really does. That's... So, uh, I mean, Sinead, you were talking about when she went through that harrowing decision to have the abortion or not mm. to have the abortion, which she did in the end. She, but otherwise, she's sort of seen as a bit ditzy, isn't yes, she? Yes, she is, yeah. Was it difficult as an actress to get back into the, you know, a se very serious storyline? Um, well, to be fair, it has been a while, because I think this is my sixth year, yeah, is yeah. in Takori, and I've just been playing a ditzy character for so long. We've had the crash, we've had the abortion, but other than that, it's just like a silly daft character, which is fun, but it's just been such a while since I've had to put myself in them shoes. I had quite a lot of serious storylines when I did Waterloo Road. Um, but again, like I say, I've just tried to imagine being in her shoes. Yeah, but let me see, She's not getting killed off. We don't. No. We don't want to give too much away. <laughs> but it would be because she is one of the classic Cory characters. Oh, I mean, you could you. see her bouncing in and out, you know, all the time. Oh, thank this you very thing. much. She's I so hope so. Easy, so good to watch, you know. So good. To yeah. Watch. You're going to miss them, aren't you? Oh my. You're going to miss them so much because yeah. you have such a laugh. Yes. I mean, we found this clip of you and Simon who oh, plays Steve <laughs> carrying on. <laughs> Look at this, hilarious. Look. What's up, Kath? Are you? About <laughs> <laughs> he just I, Does that I happen quite a lot? Just silly. <laughs> yeah, especially with Simon. I can't even look him in the eye without laughing. The man's just got funny bones. <laughs> but yeah, everybody there is, as you know, are just they're oh. just gorgeous. I'm I'm gonna miss everyone so much. I know, that'll be hard. I bet you had the best leaving do ever. Oh, it was great. <laughs> I, apparently, I got told it was one of the, if not the biggest one that they've done. So that means a lot for me. And I think more than anything was the fact, the turnout of people that came. Um, and, and you sang. And oh, it I always did. Like such yeah. good fun. That was great. me getting up fun. singing, emceeing. Oh, you'll miss yeah. it. You'll miss it a lot and they'll miss you. Yeah, I've been there for three years. I was only meant to do God, six gone months. By like it's gone flash, so quick. But I've it? loved it and everyone at Corrie, and I've always said this and I've stated it, I love you guys and I'm going to miss you. So. I bet you are. But I'll tell you what, this storyline this morning, we have been overwhelmed by people saying thank you for doing this storyline because it's hugely important. You think over 80 people, if that was anything else, there would be outcome, don't you think? Completely. I think that if this was a regular disease, we'd be lobbying governments, we'd be totally. lobbying scientists to find a cure, we'd all be in fear that someone we loved was going to be next. So that's why it's so important to talk about it, because yeah. it affects so many people. And when we were discussing this storyline and whether or not we wanted to tackle it, initially we were quite reticent and anxious. And the more we talked about it, it became apparent that everybody around that table had been affected by suicide in one way or another. Right. And when you think it's affected all of us, it's touched all of us on such a personal level, mm. shouldn't we be discussing this? So that, that's kind of what Absolutely. made it. Absolutely. Now, look, as I said, she's uh, not great when it comes to choosing blokes in her life. Let, let's have a look at some of, just some of the bad relationships she's had. I'll just run through a few, OK? Go on. Andy Sugden, her first real relationship, but Kane, dad, didn't like it. They had a baby, though, Sarah, together as teenagers, of course. Robert Sugden, Andy's brother. He was only using Debbie to hurt Andy, of course. Then there was Eli, Debbie's cousin. Oh. Don't think I want to go into <laughs> much more of that. Jasmine, once again, Dad ruined things, uh, this time by actually seducing Jasmine himself. Cameron Murray had an affair with Debbie's aunt Chaz, tried to kill them both and uh, murdered three other people, didn't he? Uh, Michael Conway told her he was getting married to another woman, Debbie's mum, Charity. And then Pete Barton looked like she might finally have found happiness when she agreed to marry him, only for her to ruin it all by having an affair with Pete's brother Ross, which was uncovered 
On the wedding day. <laughs> I know. So when you when you look at it, like you think, oh, I, oh that is ridiculous. It's not. Yeah, it's, it's not. Crazy. It's like f you know. And then we thought this one might be the. And he's worse than any of the rest of them, apart from the killer, obviously. But he's worse. Yeah, he is. He's vile. I don't think she'll yes, ever get over that. One. No, I don't think so. No. I think it's going to be quite difficult. How are they hiding the bump in Coronation Street? Well, have you, have you sort of behind trees right, and okay. whatnot? Lorraine, I'm going to tell you how they're hiding <laughs> it. Okay, so. We started with, you know, perhaps a mug like this. <laughs> um, and then we went onto a handbag. I kid you not, last week, they hid it with a Ford Fiesta. Did they? Yeah. <laughs> Honestly, they said, can we just move that car a little bit back? I said, is that for my bum? I said, well, yeah, we can see it a bit. It is going to help. Keep it up. Oh. You know, I think we need to, hopefully, this is a kickstart to something and shining a light on it, but yeah. it's also about... Um, creating infrastructures and, and ways of carrying that conversation on and deepening that conversation. Very, very much. Because it isn't, you know, taking your own life is the end of a road, but it's the end of a long road, mm -hmm. a, a long road that many, many, many of us have been on or are on. Yeah. You know, there's a lot of work to do before that very end. This is great that we're trying to put in a stop point, yeah. an emergency point, but we can change, you know, it's a cultural shift that needs to happen. Uh, really, around masculinity and, 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 and right. you know, the masculine and the female. Well, you went to Emmerdale to yeah. advise, yeah. you know, to make sure they got the story right. Obviously, it's very important that it's got to be right, you know. And then they said, oh, hey, why don't you? <laughs> yeah, I know. I mean, <laughs> it is crazy. So, like, uh, there's an amazing charity called All About Trans, and yeah. they, they work with just positive representations in the media of trans people. And they said to me, you know, we're, we're doing inter interaction with Emmerdale, they're, they're thinking about doing this storyline, and they, they're looking for some advice on, on positive reps, and they said, do you want to come? So I was like, yeah, sure. Sure. Cheeky day out, why not? Absolutely. And uh, <laughs> I went along and, and, and the next thing, you know, like they said, would you like to audition? And I was like, you know, being an actor, yeah, fantastic. Of course. Of course. And uh, here I am. Brilliant. So, what, was the, what was the first day like? Is that oh, not weird? Because yeah. if you walk, you know, I know you might love Emmerdale, but it must have been like going into your TV. It was like stepping into my TV, you know, in my first day as well. I mean, it was incredible. I'm, I was acting with the legend that is Jeff that plays Kane Dingle. Indeed. And on my first day, he had to chuck me over a table. So that was like an experience and a half, you know. <laughs> She's not going to come back and just have a pint in the wool pack, is she? She's going to come back and wreak absolute havoc. It's going to be a joy to play, I would imagine. Um, as always, a joy to play. Uh, yes, she is going to come back and reap havoc. <laughs> um, even though she's just back for a week, uh, she kind of, yeah, I think she, she, she does quite a lot in that week, actually. <laughs> um, and she's bigger, badder than she was before. Wow. And obviously a bit older. <laughs> well, you look absolutely fantastic. That's the thing, you look great. Now, what sort of reaction has your character been getting, generally from the public, when you're out and about, or letters or emails or whatever? Luckily, it's been, it's been quite nice. Good. I was, because um, I, I remember chatting to, I spoke to Jeff Hordley when I first started, and he was saying, you know, be careful about going out in public too much. Yeah. You play a baddie. If you sure. Play someone this is public, pain, of course, know, huh? The, yes, the, the ultimate baddie. Yeah. And he did say that when he first started, or possibly sometimes, he did get a bit of aggro from people right. on the streets, so and maybe yeah. avoid certain bars, but luckily, yeah. People have but it's been okay, been quite and you've nice. described it as your dream job. You know, it's something you've always wanted well, I've only to do. Been, I've only been doing it for a couple of years. Yeah. So I think for anyone who comes out of drama school, you, you're faced with the idea that it could be a very long time till you're in any type of prolonged employment. So sure. to have landed a job which has kept me employed for longer than a week <laughs> is a <laughs> dream a good job. Thing. Yeah, I mean, and the that fact that it's Emmerdale, the fact that everyone there is. Bloody lovely. Yeah. Which makes it all the more they, great. I know, that it is a great set to work on. I know oh. that. I mean, we've, we've, uh, we did a visit up there and it was a delight. Everybody was just so incredible. They're all so friendly. friendly. Yeah. I know as well that you, obviously you're taking time off Coronation Street, but will you be going back, do you think? See, um, We'd love to have you back. She's a cracking character. You see, I do. I, I miss everyone so much. Like, I really miss Sally, who plays my mum. I work really, really close. She's in jail just now. Oh, I it's know. It's all kicking <laughs> off. It's all kicking <laughs> off, Helen. <laughs> she needs you. She needs you, definitely. Oh, yeah, no, I do. <laughs> I bet you do miss it. I bet you do. Look, there we are. There, there's two of them, for goodness sake. But yeah, you hopefully come back. Yes, no, I would love to. No, de definitely. Um, it needs to be something, obviously, that works around the girls. But I do, I do miss everyone. You know. Sure.